ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا والسيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد our respected brothers and sisters in Islam, all viewers, I'm Imam Sharif from Finland, and I'm saying to everyone, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all thanks and praises are due to Allah, and I bear witness that He's the only one with no associate, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His servant and messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Al-Quran, يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون او ايها الذين فيروا الله ذا وي شو بي فيرد اند نيفر دا انليس ان ذا ستيت اوف اسلام الله سيز اجين يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا O oh, you who believe, fear Allah. O oh, mankind, fear your Lord who created you from one soul, and from that soul he created for him his partner, and from the twain he created for them their offspring. So fear your Lord from whom you attain your sustenance, and fear the womb that bore you because Allah is watching over you. Allah says again, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha wa kulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yutay allaha wa rasoolahu faqadi faza fawza al-azima O you who believe ya Allah and say good words and with that you purify your deeds and forgive you your sins Brothers and sisters in Islam, in the sins of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who were told that inna astaqa al-hadithi kitabu Allah the best of words are the words of Allah or the book of Allah. Wa khair al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best of guidance is the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he has sworn us to remain always intact on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so he says وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْمُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ You should abstain from anything that you're going to see in the future to be something new. For the religion of Al-Islam does not need any human revival, but everything is made complete by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he says, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمْ لَكُمْ لِإِسْلَامَ دِينَ Brothers and sisters, listeners, in this very moment, we're going to talk about some important rules pertaining to performing the Hajj and what also are important during the Hajj. This does actually imply, when we talk about this very issue, I'm actually uh, laying emphasis on the Muslim Ummah as a whole. I'm not only talking about those going to perform the Hajj, but rather what are the, some important rules before and then during the Hajj. So there are others also who are going to perform the Hajj, but they also need to perform or to offer some type of worship that they are going to gain greatly before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the first place, what we have to understand is that Hajj was not the first pillar of Islam or uh, wasn't the first to be ordained unto the Ummah. The first to be ordained unto the Ummah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Al-Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعَبُدُونَ None of you, O Muhammad, none of the messengers were sent before you or who was sent before you, unless I, Allah, have ordained unto him that there is no God save me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they should worship me. So this is the first and most important foundation of our faith. Based on this, 
you can enter paradise. Based on this, you have the key to open the door of paradise. Based on this, you relate yourself to the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Based on this, you will be linked to the teacher Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And based on this, you will be called a Muslim and you are a true Muslim. Then, if this is the foundation, so it has to be very, very stiff. Standing, well erected. If there is any problem with this foundation, then the building can never be erected. The building here referring to the Islam as a whole. Why am I saying this? It's because sometimes, uh, especially when it comes to Hajj, so many of us think, as the Hadith says, anyone who goes to perform the Hajj and does neither fight nor involve in any adversary argument, perform the Hajj in accordance with the Sunnah or in accordance with the teachings of the Prophet then he would come out of his sins just as the day he was born. Due to that, people lay emphasis on the Hajj, and when it's time for Hajj, they try as much as possible. Either they have their own money, or it's been paid for them, whatever the situation is that, you see them in Makkah, going to perform the Hajj, and then return home. But whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept or not, neither me nor anyone can say, but in accordance with the teachings of the Prophet we can actually understand what type of Hajj will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> Someone came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked him about Islam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, to bear witness, shahadatu Allah ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah. Bear witness that there is no God save Allah and Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Then he asked him anything else, then he said, if only you believe. The same thing applied to when he sent another Sahabi to his tribe. He said, you are going to meet your people. People meaning that your tongue, speaking the same language with them. Call them, telling them that there is no God save Allah. If they accept you on this principle, then tell them that Allah has ordained unto them five times a day or day and night to pray. If they accept, then tell them that out of what Allah has given them of money, yearly, two and a half percent is to be given to Allah in charity. If they accept, then tell them that Allah had ordained also unto them to fast the month of Ramadan, 29 or 30 days. And if they accept, then tell them anyone who is capable during the month of Hajj, he should go and perform the Hajj at least once in his lifetime. So he laid the principle in accordance with the rules that are laid by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he arrived at Hajj. Why am I saying all these things? Because sometimes you will see someone going to perform Hajj, his aqidah is zero. What is aqidah? His belief in Allah is not strong. Why? Because he believes that Allah exists. He believes that he can worship, he has to worship Allah. Allah deserves and everything, but yet he falls into a very big hole by going to believe or worshiping something beside Allah. Either he worship a deity or he does certain things that sent him out of the real faith that has been ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you would find the person he is worshipping Allah, but whenever he falls into trouble, he goes to the soothsayer, he goes to the fortune teller, he goes to someone to make magic for him that he can be able to retrieve certain things that he's maybe he needs uh, to, to have or to get during life, uh, his life. When he wants to trade, whenever he wants to work, or he's seeking for anything within these worldly bounties, then he would seek the assistance of something beside Allah. Such a person, your aqidah, is incomplete. In any case, the person has committed what is known as association of partners with Allah, which is shirk. So his iman is incomplete. So if your iman is incomplete, 
at that time, brother, at that time, sister, you have to understand that going to Mecca is haram. Listen very carefully. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayuha alladhina amanu, O ye who believe, innama al-mushirikuna najazun. Most certainly, the non-believers that the so associates of partners with Allah are dirty. Fala ya qariba, fala ya qaribu. That they should not get closer to the haram, Masjid al Haram, that means the sacred mosque of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ba'da Amihim Hada, after this year of deals. So at the time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it forbidden for those who associate partners with Him to visit Makkah. So anyone who associates partners with Allah, the person going to Makkah is haram for him unless his aqidah is completely steady in the sense that he believes there is no one who is worthy of worship but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the servant and the messenger of Allah so your aqidah which is being the foundation has to be very very strong before you go to visit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Mecca else going there in the first place is haram so why then do you have to go that's first secondly if your aqidah is right and you don't pray, we have to agree very well. This is very, it is a fact that there are so many people who go to perform the Hajj, they don't pray. Not that they are Muslims, they are Muslims, but they don't pray. Five times a day, no. Sometimes they pray, or sometimes they go to pray Juma. Sometimes they go to pray only the Hajj, the, the Hajj, um, sorry, the Eid time. Then they will say, oh, Allah says, oh, the messenger of Allah say, whenever you go to perform the Hajj, Allah clean all the bad deeds that you've been performing or you've been committing ever since you were born. So now you are born fresh. Brother, this does not apply to you. Why? Because the second pillar is broken. If you don't pray, it means your, your Iman is incomplete. Because Allah has made Hajj to be the fifth pillar. If the first pillar, which is Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not steady, then you have a problem. If the second one, which is Salah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says in a hadith that Bain al Muslim, the, that means Bain al Abdi wal Kufri as Salah, between the human being or between the servant of Allah and this belief is prayer. Anybody who should stop or should abstain from prayer has already made a what? He's a disbeliever. So it doesn't mean only that you call yourself a Muslim. As long as you don't pray, then you are a disbeliever. In the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says, Antabu wa aqamu salah, if only they repent and then establish prayer, fa ikhwan then they are really your brothers in the religion. So it means the prayer is what link you between, between, between you and another Muslim, if the prayer is not there, then it means that that link will not actually exist before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the second pillar has to be observed. The person has to be praying five times a day. Then after he's already making the shahada, that Allah is one with no, no associate, and he does not go to anyone to seek for any help. He does not go to worship any deity. He does not go to any fortune teller or a soothsayer to ask about his fortune or to, be, to ask about his life or if he's going to make trade or anything, he does not seek any help or help from anyone but Allah, then at that time, the person is what? Is a good Muslim. Then the second is about the pillar, uh, the second pillar of Islam, which is prayer. If only he observe his prayer, then at that time, the second pillar is being observed, Alhamdulillah. Then the third pillar is zakah. The zakah, you have to pay 2.5% of your money, or you have to give it out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yearly. This is the right of Allah on you. If that is observed, then the fourth pillar has to come in, which is fasting. We have to agree that it's not every Muslim who fasts. Some Muslims don't fast, but when it comes to Hajj, mashallah, he dresses well, he buys a ticket and goes to perform Hajj, when actually the pillars of Islam that come before the pillar known as Al-Hajj is not being observed. So these are the conditions we have to understand that before we can be able to go and perform Hajj, one, our Aqidah has to be very, very stable. We have to lay the foundation of what? Iman in our heart, 
that there is no one but Allah. If we say there is no one but Allah, then we should not have to go to anyone beside Allah. If we say that no one is worthy of worship, then we don't have to seek help from any deity. We don't have to go to a soothsayer. We don't go to a fortune teller. We don't go to the graveyard in order to go and worship the dead person. All these are known as issues of association of madness with Allah or going astray. So the second, we have to pray, make sure that five times a day we observe our prayers then comes the zakah, which is uh, our yearly due that we have to give out to those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran. And finally, we have to observe the fasting, which is one month in a year that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also uh, made it as a rule. In every year in the month of Ramadan, we have to observe what is known as the fasting. So if all these are being realized, then at that time, the fifth pillar can be observed. This is what we have to understand. If only these four are being observed, put in place, then we can continue by observing the fifth pillar. Good. The next complicated issue or problem concerning going to perform Hajj here is this. Uh, sometimes we politicize the religion, especially we who come from a mixed country, whether we call it a Christian country or we say a secular country, most of the times, or most of the times, uh, it's been under the Christian rule. We don't have any Islamic rule anywhere. In any case, uh, there are laws that are laid by, laid by men. It has nothing to do with, uh, let's say, war, uh, divine law. In any case, it's been accepted so we go or we undergo such rules and conditions set uh, by the uh, authorities good what i'm talking about is politicizing the uh, religion is this we have both muslims and christians the population might be either of the religion or of the members maybe more in number than the uh, maybe uh, the other Either Christians are more than the Muslims, or Muslims are more than the Christians. In any case, you live in peace and harmony. Then at the time of Hajj, the ruling party will decide that they promised before coming to power that they will favor the Muslims whenever uh, they are actually elected to go uh, to come to power. So when that happens, then they will try to fulfill their promise by making sure that they send Muslims to Mecca uh, for free. For free meaning that they will not pay, but where does the money come from? The money come from the state. Now, there is a question here. Allah knows very well that it's not every human being uh, within the Muslims who can be able to have money to go and perform the Hajj. So Allah didn't force anyone to perform the Hajj. That is why the Prophet made us to understand by saying that that first fifth pillar is to be observed and it has to be optional for anyone who is able to have the capability you can be able to buy your ticket from your country to Mecca in and out then also you have some money reserve i mean to preserve or to uh, leave money behind that can feed your family if you are a father can feed your wife and children until you return you have to understand that at that time, brother, the party is sending you to Mecca. The party is sending you to Mecca with which money? The money that belongs to the whole country. So if the country is made up of 20 million people, let's say you have 60, uh, uh, out of 20 million, you have, let's say 10 million, or let's say 7 million Christians. Then you have, let's say 5 million uh, Muslims. Then you, you have traditionalists, those also who worship something else. Then again, you have uh, people who are, let's say, free. They don't worship anything. You have to understand that the money that belongs to the state is for the whole of the 20 million people. So whenever such monies are going to be used for anything, then it has to be used under the agreement of all these 20 million. You may make rules and conditions for them and say, okay, this money or that money is to be used for this and that, and they have to accept whether it has to be done that way or not. In any case, you're going to have everyone sitting in the parliament to make a decision. What we have to understand is that you are being sent to Mecca because you belong to the party. 
Mm -hmm. If you belong to the party, then you have to understand one thing. Under Islamic law, uh, when you have a rule that is un-Islamic, you don't support such rule. As long as the rule is against the rules of Allah. But if you have no choice, that you still have to. Why? Because you belong to, uh, the, uh, to the country. And secondly, whether you like or not, such rules might be applied. Then all that you have to do is that you also have to play part in order to be part of the uh, community and then also vote in order that you can see uh, that uh, someone who is more better come to power that can favor also uh, your way of life as long as uh, these are the rules that are laid down for each and every one of you. But what you have to understand here is that when you are going to be sent to Hajj under such a condition, there are some scholars who are saying that it is not befitting for you to accept such offer. Why? They say because the money doesn't belong to the party. The money belongs to the whole country, and the whole country is made up of that of the 20 million, and then it is being now used for very few people. And you have to understand one thing too. When these favors are being made, the favors mostly doesn't reach the poor. It doesn't reach the needy. It doesn't reach people who have not even performed Hajj. It only reaches those who are having the capability. Most of times, is it reaches the, the rich people or those who have the means at least to be able to perform, perform, perform the Hajj, but they are using this as uh, an optional or they are using this as an advantage because they belong to the party. So every time you have to follow uh, such rules in order that you can be able to perform the Hajj. Under such condition, we are saying that actually it is not very befitting. It might be a situation whereby the whole country might agree that, okay, Muslims should have this quota whenever it comes to uh, performing the, uh, the Hajj or the pilgrimage. But if you have a country whereby you have Christians and Muslims and other uh, traditionalists and so on, then all of them have to have the same right. The right of either going to perform Hajj and the right of the Christians going to Jerusalem or wherever to uh, for, for their pilgrimage and so on. But this is not done because you know that Muslims are the ones who need them when it comes to uh, performing the pilgrimage. In any case, Allah didn't make it as a force on you, but rather it is a rule. Now let me take an example. Sometimes you may have the chance of going to perform the Hajj. You yourself, you are a poor person, or you don't have money. They don't give you money. What they give you is the ticket for you to go in and out. You have wife and children. Where are you going to have money in order to leave this money behind that they can be able to feed on until you return? Is it still going to give you that money? That's one. Secondly, you may be owing someone. Owing someone also is a rule. If you owe someone, you have to pay the debt before you can be able to go and perform the Hajj. For if, for instance, I owe someone uh, 100 euros and uh, I'm able to have, uh, let's say, 3,000 euros to buy a ticket to Mecca and back, and then I didn't pay these 100 euros, then I need to seek permission from this person who actually has to uh, say, okay, now you can go and perform the Hajj, but you give me the money on your return or you give me at a certain time then at that time I can be able to go and perform the Hajj. There are so many rules and conditions that are laid down in order that you have to observe when you are going to perform the Hajj. But since this involves politics, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our Hajj and this is all that I can say. But in any case, we have to understand that as a Muslim, try as much as possible if you can be able to uh, accumulate money by the will of Allah, that is halal, get the money that is halal and then perform the Hajj when you have no right of anyone on you. But not that you use money that belongs to a 20, billion, 20 million people when they are actually not in agreement with you going to use their money to perform Hajj, then you go to do because you belong to a party. This has nothing to do with your religion. You don't have to politicize your religion. You have to worship your Lord. That is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way that it's halal and Allah will accept your, 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 your ritual than to go and perform whether people like it or not. That's another rule we have to also have. The next rule that we have to put under consideration is that when you are going to perform Hajj, brother, you have to understand one thing, that you are going to seek forgiveness of Allah. You are going to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are going to seek favor from Allah. So you might have in the past offended some people, or you have taken the rights of some people, or you owe someone, you borrow money, you didn't, sell, you didn't pay the money back. 
all these and rule other conditions that actually are rights of people on you in this regard you have to pay them before going to perform the hajj so if you owe someone you have to pay the debt before you buy your ticket and go uh, or travel to Mecca. but if only you are able to buy the ticket and still yet you don't have much money on you to pay them then you can seek permission from them and say brother i know i owe you this much money but this year i want to go and perform hajj so i would like you to uh favor me by allowing me to uh, to pay you at a later time if only he agree then at that time inshallah with such an agreement you can go and perform the hajj the other rule or condition is that you have to as long as i mentioned that we're going to seek forgiveness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, repenting to him and seeking his favor then you have to also make sure that under such a situation if you have offended anyone seek that the person forgive you you call him or you visit him brother sister i've decided to go and perform the hajj and if this and that that is between us which is not good or i realize that okay we have I've offended you in this or that manner i would like you to forgive me so that you go to perform the hajj when your heart is clean you don't have problem with anyone this also has to be observed another condition also is that if you are able to buy a ticket in and out you have to have enough money that can also be uh you can be able to cater for yourself while you are away or while you are in Mecca until your return then again you also have to have money that you have to leave behind for your family or for your wife and children definitely your family that can they can feed on until your return all these are conditions the are rules lay down if you go to perform the hajj and leave your wife and children hungry then brother you have gone against the rules it is not a challenge it is not a competition in the rituals allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who he has given the right or the money or he, who he has given the bounty in order that he can go to perform the hajj if Allah didn't give you it is not a force have patience maybe some other time but if you have to force yourself to go and perform the hajj because people are going to perform hajj or because you want to have a title then at that time you are not doing the right thing <clears throat> okay beside these rules that we have actually talked about now we are laying emphasis on those who are not able to perform the hajj like for instance we are not being able to go uh, this year to perform the hajj now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy for us in what are known as occasionally whereby we can be able to seek uh guidance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do some other or perform some other deeds that we get a lot of rewards from allah jannah wa ala that is when it refers to uh, these first 10 days of al hajj uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he mentioned in the quran wal fajri wa layalin ashr allah swearing by the time of fajr and then swearing by the time of uh, uh, swearing by the first 10 days of al hajj whereby he mentioned that these 10 days are very important as said by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ma min ayyamin ala amalu salih ahabbu ila allah min hadhi ayyam aw kama qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam there are no days that doing or performing a good deed is more pleasing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than these days that is why when we talk about uh, doing good or giving sadaqah for instance in ramadan we know very very sure very well that in ramadan giving sadaqah you have a, you get a lot of rewards because of the uh the month being, being, a, being a holy month and especially the last 10 days of ramadan then again allah is making a uh, reference to these 10 days that has actually started today which is uh, sunday the first day of azal hijjah uh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made mention by swearing so the ulama saying that to compare between these days and Ramadan, giving sadaqah in the first 10 days of Zilhijjah before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more 
uh, having more quality, it's a very high, high, high quality uh, than giving Sadaka in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Being if you compare between the two, then what you do in these first 10 days of the Hijjah is more of uh, more worthy before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than what you do in the last 10 days of Ramadan or any other day in Ramadan. So because why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing and saying that these 10 days, and that is why the Prophet has made us to understand the meaning of this swearing and saying that these are the values or these are the qualities that you can actually attain in these uh, first 10 days of Ramadan. So uh, within the rules, uh, within the goodies that you can perform here in these uh, last 10 days is that your obligatory prayers, you have to try as much as possible because these are what are more important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there is nothing that is more loving to him for the servant to perform or to do than what I have obligated him. For instance, it's an obligation that you pray five times a day, obligation that you fast the month of Ramadan is also obligatory that you have to give Ramadan uh, zakah. So all these are obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on you. So if you don't perform the five daily prayers and you do some extra prayers instead of the five daily prayers, these prayers will not be accepted because those that are on you, you do not observe them. The same applies to zakah. You don't give zakah when you have the means, then you give sadaqah. Definitely the zakah will not be accepted and sadaqah will not be accepted from you because what is more important, even though it's as little as you may think, but rather it's more of a higher quality before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing is to make sure that we observe what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do. These are the obligatory prayers. Then beside that, we also have to increase in our prayers. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that anyone who pray 12 unit prayers extra, which is extra day and night, Allah builds for you a home or a house or a palace in paradise. What are they? Which are they? The two raka before the morning prayer, then four before Dhuhr prayer, and two after Dhuhr, making eight, then two after Maghrib, making ten, and two after Isha, making twelve. So daily, these extra prayers are twelve. In accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, anyone who observes them, Allah subhanahu wa taala builds for you a place in paradise. So if you have a place in paradise, definitely hellfire is not going to be your place. May Allah guide us all. So you can increase in doing, making, making sure that you, you maintain them in these 10 days. We know very sure or very well that we don't always observe what is extra. We try as much as possible to do the obligations and that's all. But when you know very well how much you would get when you perform this uh, uh, these salah or these prayers, then you have to make sure that you do them because you are going to get or gain so much before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then again, it comes to a voluntary fasting. Anyone who can be able to fast the 10 days, then it is more better. But if you cannot fast the 10 days, you can fast some days, that's quite okay. But if you cannot fast at all, then make sure that on the day of Arafah, you fast that day. And the day of Arafah is the day before Eid. If you perform or you observe that fasting, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has made us to understand that you have two years forgiven or forgiveness of sins before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So apart from the fasting, then we came again, we talk about good deeds. There are so many good deeds that you can perform, especially you begin with yourself, then with your family, make sure you show kindness to your wife and children, and make sure you show kindness to your parents if they are still alive. Those that have lost their parents, you can do uh, something in their favor, something in their favor in the sense that, for instance, you can make some sadaqah in their favor. Uh, you can, uh, any good that or any kindness that you can show people with the intention that you are doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward your parents, you can do so. And also you can make uh, so much to uh, for your parents as well. The same applies to you helping other people who are in need. Be they orphans, be they needy, be they uh, the poor, uh, you also try as much as possible that you can be able to show kindness to them. Any type of kindness that you can do or show in these days, these 10 days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you greatly in accordance with uh, the Quran and the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So on the day of Arafah, the importance of that day, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it as a day when those in Mecca will not be fasting because they will need time, they need energy, that they will go and stand on the Mount of Arafah seeking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood on the Mount of Arafah and while he was making dua, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent unto him Jibreel alayhi salam. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma says, he was on the Mount of Arafah and then he was praying. The Prophet says that the Mount, he said, I'm Hajju Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. If you get Arafah, then you have actually got the Hajj. So Hajj, on the day of Arafah, you have to make dua. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma was making dua. He was saying, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah. Then one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, heard these words as I've been said or I've been narrated by, uh, I've been recited by Ibn Abbas and he said, Oh Ibn Abbas, why are you remembering Allah when you are supposed to seek from Him? Because the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Anyone who stands on the day of Arafah should seek from Allah, make dua, and read that you are praising Allah. Then Ibn Abbas said, I will not ask Allah for anything. I will rather praise him by these words because I heard the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, saying, quoting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as saying, that means Allah is now speaking. Allah is saying, anyone who spent time in remembering me allah i allah will give him more than what others ask me meaning that while you remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these words praising him then that will make allah to give you more than what you need remember allah knows what you need more than you know yourself so before asking allah already knows what is in your heart so without asking, Allah already know what you need and that which is more better for you. So by the remembrance of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer you by actually giving you more than what you need. Remember, he made mention in the Quran that we seek forgiveness of him. You make the sky to pour rain, send rain. Make the earth to grow food. Cure our sicknesses and this and that and that. All why? Because of one prayer and that prayer is we are seeking forgiveness of Allah. He made mention to the, the made mention of this uh, to Nuh alayhi salam and other uh, messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the remembrance of Allah is the highest way or the highest level at which one can pray or can see from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the highest of all, as we mentioned, is La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-ham, yuhi wa yumid, wa huwa la kulli shayin qadir. So insha'Allah tabarak wa ta'ala we can increase in doing or uh, in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these 10 days, let's try as much as possible. You don't need to struggle, sweat, no. Just a little that you do and you gain much. If you can fast, that's good. If you cannot, you pray, alhamdulillah. Read a lot of Quran, masha'Allah. Make a lot of dhikr, uh, istighfar. Say a lot of praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la ilaha illallah. Forgive those who offend you and also seek forgiveness of those that you have offended. Make special prayers for your parents who are already dead, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lighten their grace. Make prayers for those also who are in need. You know your brother is in need. If he didn't, he didn't ask you uh, for prayer, maybe he's sick, maybe he's actually having a tight or a very serious problem. Make dua for him in, in absentia. These dua are very strong. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that when you make dua for your brother in his absent or uh, in his absence, then Allah subhanahu wa taala will actually accept this dua because they are very strong. So, inshallah wa uh, taala, with this uh, we have come to a very simple understanding concerning uh, the importance or the rules that are to be observed concerning our Hajj that we go to perform every year. Like I mentioned in the beginning, make sure that you get your own money, buy a ticket with your money in and out, then you have some money for your, uh, your family until your return, then at that time you are ready to perform the Hajj. If you owe someone, make sure that you pay 
uh, that uh, the, the, you pay the money or you pay the person before going to perform, perform Hajj because uh, it is like you are you owe someone and then you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have favor on you unless with the permission of that person you can still uh, perform Hajj and later on inshallah you would pay this man uh, money in return and I made mention about making sure that we cleanse ourselves making sure that uh, we believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the aqidah uh, that should be very strong because that is the foundation of our faith and it is also a rule within the rules of our faith if your aqidah is not stable then of course you have problem with Allah if you involve in shirk then of course your hajj you may go and come but that will not be accepted because even going to Makkah is not allowed for you then secondly make sure that you observe the prayers which is which are five daily prayers before going to perform the hajj why because it is the second pillar of Islam you cannot perform the fifth pillar without observing the second pillar. The same thing applies to the third pillar, which is zakah, and also the fourth pillar, which is uh, the fasting. So make sure that these four are being observed as much as you can, then at that time, your doors are open for you to go and perform the hajj. Then I made mention about politics. Of course, like I said, I'm not saying that if you uh, are favored to go and, and perform the hajj, with the money of the state, it, it doesn't, I mean, uh, your, your hajj will not be accepted. No, I'm not saying so. What I'm trying to point, point out here is that you know definitely that some other people are being cheated when they have to use that money for you. Let's compare our people in, in Europe, for instance. There is, in Europe, they have the laws laid down. For instance, if you are not working, you can be supported for some time. Then after that, when you gain job, I mean, you get a job, then that support will be what? will be uh, seized any party who come to rule they go according to this law so this law has been accepted by the whole country they know very well that you may be working today tomorrow something can happen and then you will not have work or job to do you may go on pension and then uh, when you when you are you, I mean, you, you retire you need to be supported all these they agree with the rules and regulations that are set down so no matter which party comes in the rules are there they follow the rule they follow the law you don't know, hear them that they are favoring the church or favoring. No, 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 no. These things are not in there. So it's a secular country like our countries as well. But if you go back to our countries, what is happening is completely unjust. And in Islam, we are a just religion and we have to follow the rules that are laid down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot take what belongs to him and then give it to the other person when actually the this first person is not actually in agreement with what uh, you are doing. So this is why I've actually, actually brought this up and we have to make sure that uh, anybody uh, who is going to perform Hajj should try to get his own uh, personal or claim money. Sometimes you even send people to Hajj when the people are don't, they, they don't pray. Even maybe the person can even not be a Muslim. You send them to, uh, to Mecca on, on tour or to Medina on tour because during your campaign you promise that if you come, you help the Muslims. And this, this person is maybe he has a Muslim name, but he's, he doesn't even believe in Islam. So as long as you want to favor them, you favor them. You favor the rich, you favor those who are having, and the poor ones are dead. They're not able to perform Hajj. The old ones are dead, they're not able to perform Hajj. Even if they are tough to go and perform Hajj, they pay very dearly. Their children have to work from abroad and send money back home. And when they, the, the monies are there, they are supposed to go and perform the Hajj. They are also giving a very hard situation. I mean, we have to understand that there is no justice when it comes to these issues. So as long as we, our religion is the religion of just, we have to make sure that we do everything in accordance with the way that we can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we don't have to cheat any individual. If you cheat, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely is going to make sure that you pay uh, in return. So finally, uh, I made mention also about those who are not able to perform Hajj. Try as much as possible to do a lot of good deeds in these 10 days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can accept your deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you greatly, greatly. And on the day of Arafah, try as much as possible to fast. If you fast that year, I'm mean, sorry, that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you since all the past year and the year that also uh, follows. Then after that, uh, on the day of Eid, definitely the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked me this to understand that we have to sacrifice uh, whether lamb, cattle, any type of animal that is actually being ordained in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, in relation with the Quran, then we have to make sure that if we are able to sacrifice, then that is within the, our religion. So we should try to sacrifice and make sure that we go in accordance with the rules that are set down. Then with that, inshallah, we can say we are happy 
we are, are celebrating the Eid of Al Adha, which is the Eid whereby we are slaughtered. With this, we have come to the end of today's lesson, inshallah. Anything that I said that is right from Allah. And what I said that is actually wrong is from myself and from Satan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. May Allah purify our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us still uh still in the religion that we can be able to understand and then after understanding we believe in in our belief. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also keep us as strong Muslims anytime and anywhere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our parents who are dead and they are in their grace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them Jannah. May Allah make their grace a place of paradise. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala forgive their sins. We also want to like Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make fathers and mothers those of paradise for their children. Our children, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless them, make them more better than us. Those who are seeking marriage, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give them good spouses. Those who are married and they are seeking children, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give them good children. And those who have children, they have problems with their uh, children, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make it easy for them. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ease the problem of each and every one of us. Whoever is seeking from Allah, be it in secret or in public, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept that which is more better uh, for him. And with this, we say, Subhanakallah wa bihamdik, Asharallah ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruk wa atubu ilaik, wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.